1 minus 2 co squared x. You have to be very careful of your original identities. We know that sine squared x is equal to 1 minus co squared x, but not 1 minus 2 co squared x. So we can't replace the right-hand side. So sometimes you're going to see things that look similar, but be very careful. Because of this 2 over here, this expression is not equal to sine x squared x, so don't replace it. This was a question from a test last year, and uh, you know that was a very common mistake. So be careful and always memorize your identities. Okay, so this is a difference of square situation. I know that sine 4x can be broken up, trial and error, into sine squared x times sine squared x, and cos to the power of 4x can be broken up into cos x, cos squared x, and cos squared x. To make it a difference of squares situation, we're going to make one side positive, one side negative. So the left-hand side of my equation is equivalent to sine squared x plus cos squared x times sine squared x minus cos squared x. So this is a factoring question. Okay, based on what I showed you in the first slide, my identities that I showed you, the truth, is there anything I can replace here? Look back at your notes. Yep. What is 1 equal to? Good. So we can't mix them up. Sine squared x plus cos squared x, that is just equal to, oops, that's just equal to 1. So I have 1 times sine squared x minus cos squared x. So since that goes, it kind of disappears because it's a 1, all I'm left with is sine squared x minus cos squared x. Okay. Now, this is another point that I want to say. I'm going to choose to replace the sine squared x with something. Now, you're going to ask or wonder why I'm not replacing the cos squared x. You'll notice that the right-hand side of the equation is in terms of cos squared x, right? So we want to manipulate the left-hand side of the equation so all I have are cos squared x. So I don't want to get rid of the cos squared x. I want to keep the cos squared x, and I want to replace the sine squared x. So can you flip back into your notes and tell me, what can I replace the sine squared x with? What is sine squared x equal to? Uh, yeah, Andrea. Okay, I'm, go I'm getting somewhere now. Sine squared x is equal to 1 minus cos squared x, right? Oops, 1 minus cos squared x. Sine squared x is equal to 1 minus cos squared x. So I've replaced that in my problem. I now have negative cos squared x. Sine squared x minus cos squared x. So I've written the problem, and all I've done is replace the sine squared x. Now if you look carefully, the 1 cannot be combined with anything. However, negative cos squared x minus cos squared x is equal to negative 2 cos squared x. Just like positive cos squared x plus cos squared x would give me positive 2 cos squared x. What is this equal to? Right? The right-hand side of my equation. So I have proved that my left-hand side is equal to my, my right-hand side. When you're manipulating, when you're playing around with your equation, always keep in mind what, keep looking back to what you're aiming, what you're trying to get. And you'll see that it is a puzzle. And as I play the game of manipulating and replacing things, I'm uh, getting closer and closer to the right-hand side. You're not, sometimes you might go off the wrong track and have to backtrack, okay? Um, you're not going to always get it right away. But for me, it's a fun little game. <laughs> So the next problem is much more complicated, but we're going to be talking about now common denominators 
that means if you have common denominators, we're going to be involving fraction, or because this is these are algebraic trigonometric expressions, we call them rational, rational expressions. Okay, so equation number, problem number three. This will be easy to see what side we're dealing with. Okay, so this is going to be a little long. Okay. First of all, Emily, what do you think, which side should I work with, which is more complicated? Yes, the left-hand side. So my left-hand side. Now, I know right away, first rule I told you, if so you have a sine squared x plus a cos squared x, replace that with 1. Or if you have tan x, I always focus on the tan x, like a hitman. You want to get rid of the tan x right away, okay? So uh, we'll copy this down, I have cos x over 1 minus sine x minus tan x. Instead of minus tan x, I'm going to put minus sine x over cosine x. Yikes, I'm running out of time. Okay. So it's a little, it's trickier to find out what the common denominator is because we're dealing with expressions, not numbers. When you're dealing with numbers, now you guys are experts with common denominators. But whenever you have rational expressions or trigonometric expressions, to get a common denominator, and whenever you have a fraction and a fraction, you have to combine them with a common denominator. So the common denominator is simply going to be putting them together. So I'm going to still keep my two fractions separate. However, you put the two denominators together in order to get your common denominator. So I'm going to have cos, oops, cos x, cos x, and my second part of my denominator is going to be multiplied by 1 minus sine x. Multiplied by 1 minus sine x. Just put whatever those denominators are, just put them together. Now what we are going to do, so I'm going to use the colors to really help me. In black, I'm going to write the original denominators. The original denominators on top. What you have to ask yourself, and whenever you're dealing with common denominators, you have to ask yourself, what does, what is this problem missing in the denominator in order to generate the common denominator? So I have a 1 minus sine x. What is it missing in order for it to look like this? In the, and we're just looking at the denominators right now, right? Yes. What, it has a 1 minus sine x in common, but it's missing the cosine x. So whatever it's missing, you're going to multiply your original denominator by whatever is missing, okay? So Allison's going to help me here. Allison, it already has a cos x in the denominator. What is it miss missing so that it looks like this? What is this denominator missing in order to look like this? Yes, 1 minus sine x. So whatever it's missing, we're going to multiply my numerator by that amount, one or by that expression. So just so you can see that clearly, because this is the most important step, you're multiplying by what is missing. This is what it's missing. Over here, the 1 minus sine x is missing, so you're multiplying by that. Theoretically, if we just cancel these out, we're, we're back to the original question. So the parts that are missing are extremely important. Now we can go ahead and put everything under a common denominator of cos x times 1 minus sine x. And now what I'm going to do with my uh, denominator, I'm going to move and rewrite everything so that it's all over a common denominator. So I have cos x times cos x minus 
sine x times 1 minus sine x.